All right, this will hopefully be a quick tutorial on Super Factory Manager in version 4.10.1. Right now the mod's available for 1.19.2 and 1.19.4. If you encounter any bugs, uh, please make sure to create an issue on the GitHub tracker or let us know in the Discord. There should be a link to that in the description. So let's start off with how do you use the mod? We're gonna need two or three things. We're gonna need the manager, we're gonna need a disc and a label gun. And then this is a mod for moving items. So let's get some chests and let's get some items to move. So we'll take some stone and that should be fine. So you want to place the manager next to, uh, or you don't need to place it next to the inventory. There is inventory cables that can be used to extend the influence of the manager beyond just the six sides. So if we have a chest over here and a chest over here, then we want to move everything from the left chest into the right chest. So let's write that program by putting the disk inside, clicking edit, or using the shortcut. So uh, you can name your program, and that's just whatever you want. It's to help you remember what it does. And we're going to need a trigger for this. So the program is only going to run when it's triggered, and we can have it trigger every 20 ticks. So every 20 ticks, we're going to move everything from the left. So let's say input from left, and we're gonna output to right. Uh, these keywords are case insensitive. So every 20 ticks, we're gonna take everything from the left chest and move it to the right chest. And right now, it's not gonna be doing anything. So if we put the stone in here, it's not moving. And that's because our program has some issues. And hovering over the disk tells us, we use these labels in our code, left and right, but they're not assigned in the world. To do that, we're gonna use the label gun shift right click to pull the labels now those labels are inside the gun and we can assign them in the world so i can say that's left shift scroll will cycle through the labels and we'll say that's right you can also write whatever you want here and label that as well then we can right click without shifting to push them back to the manager so now this disc has a copy of those labels and it's warning us that the the heh labels are not used in the code, but they are defined in the world. In addition, they're also not connected by cables. So it's giving us some helpful warnings there. Uh, we can shift click to remove those extra labels and it kind of works. So now it's, uh, if we were to pull, they've been removed in the world, but it still says zero. So that's, that's something I'll have to fix later. But for now, our program should be working. So our stone is gone, it's moved over here. So if we had much stone, over all the slots, it moves it all at once. So if we had multiple stacks of stone, then uh, this should be moving everything, not just stone. So let's grab some random crap, and it moves it all. So what if you only want to move one item at a time? Then if we just say input one, that should work. So now it's taking one at a time. But we usually want to do something a little more complex than that. So what if we had a bunch of furnaces and we want to smelt some items? So we'd also have some coal. Let's say we have an input chest, a bunch of furnaces, and then an output chest. So let's write our program. So every 20 ticks, we want to input from our ingredients. and we're gonna to output to the furnace. So let's see what that does. Invalid program, missing do. Ah, yes, every 20 ticks, do. So if we were to put coal inside here, uh, we have to update the labels, of course. So it still thinks that's left and right, but we want this to be ingredients and this to be furnace. So now it takes the coal and where did it put it? It put it in the top slot, which is not what we want. We can fix that by saying output to coal to furnace bottom side. Let's see if that does what we want. So now the coal is in the fuel slot, which is good. Let's also get something to smelt. Let's do raw iron. Come on. I need to update my JEI because this bug is annoying. Really? There. 
bunch of raw iron and some coal. Uh, we want all of the furnaces to get coal. So if we only have a stack and it all goes into the first one, then we're losing efficiency here. So what we can do is say output to one coal to each furnace. Uh, so that will move each furnace is going to get one coal. If we don't have the word each here, then it's only going to output one coal in total. So I can show you what that would look like. 63, 62. So now it's only going into the first furnace. If that furnace was full, then it should move on to the next one. And it does. But we want it to always distribute evenly. So if we use the word each, now each of the furnaces is getting one coal at a time. Uh, we still need to move our ingredients though. So what are we going to smelt? In this case, we have raw iron. We could also have raw gold and raw chicken. Why not? So we want to output raw stuff to each furnace top side. And one coal smelts eight items, so it would make sense to only output eight at once. And now we have eight items at once going in each of the furnaces. So if we get rid of all the coal, it should move on to the gold and the chicken. Oh, it's uh, not called raw chicken, it's just chicken. So we could also do uh, eight chicken. So we can do comma separated with uh, individual quantities and that should work. So now inside here we have our chicken, but we need to be collecting the items. So right now we're smelting things, but we're not taking the results. So in a different block, A different block is important because right now it still remembers that we're inputting from the ingredients. So if we were to add another input in here and say input from furnace output to results, then this will still remember that we're inputting from the ingredients. And we don't want to go right from the input to the output. We want input furnace then output. So we'll put this inside another block. And these will run uh, concurrently. So now, what's going on here? Results, so we need to label the output chest and push it back. So now there's no warnings. And everything is now gone from the furnace because we have not specified that we only want to take the outputs. It's now also taking the ingredients. So we can fix that by uh, filtering the uh, slots or by adding an item filter. So in this case, we'd only want iron ingots or ingots instead of raw or we could just specify the output slot so i think we can do that by saying from furnace north side let's see if that works so if we have okay so it's still taking from the fuel slot interesting uh, bottom so i believe hopper behavior is that when you pull from the bottom it won't pull the fuel, it'll only pull from the, the result slots. But interestingly, inputting to the bottom does input to the fuel slot. So let's make sure we have all our ingredients. And now it should be smelting and only taking the resulting items. That's because blocks can define different behavior for inputting and outputting from sides versus uh, without specifying a direction that will affect behavior. And an example of that is mechanism. So if I had a, a power cell cube, yeah. So if we have an energy cube and we want to move RF around, then we have a full one on the left and an empty one on the right. Let's get a program disk. So the name is optional. Uh, what's it? Forge energy. So this is instead of moving items, we're now moving uh, forge energy or RF from the left to the right. And this should not work. So first we need to label it. We have right, whoops, and left. 
and this is still full. And that's because without specifying a direction, we just said from left instead of from left top side, uh, the mechanism blocks are read only if you don't have a direction. And if you do have a direction, then it uses the config within the block. So we can say, or it by default has the top as input, everything input except for the front uh, as the output. So the, what direction are we facing? This is, we're facing north. So we'd want to pull from the south to get energy out of this. And we can just input to the top side. And now all the energy has been moved. And this should work for very large numbers. So if we had an ultimate energy cube, then we can move all of that at once, because why not? So this works with more than just items. This works with RF, this works with liquids. So if we had tanks, sure, let's get, these are creative tanks. Lava, why not? We had a manager two tanks, one of them having a bunch of lava, and we want to move the lava from one side to the other, it would be basically the same. So let's get a disk. So in this case, you can omit the mod ID and the resource name if you want, just by doing uh, two colons. And without that, it should be or for, for items specifically. So in this case, we have, uh, we've mentioned chicken and coal, but we didn't say item Minecraft coal. It, it assumes item by default and it will assume every namespace or item or like mod ID by default. So if we had uh, a thing with a chest and we had two different things called stick, we have a Minecraft stick and an HDPE stick. Come on. So if we uh, use wildcard matching on stick, this will match Minecraft and mechanism sticks. This is a change from earlier versions of the mod where it only did uh, Minecraft by default. So now it moved our sticks, but it's not moving uh, other. So let's finish up this fluid example. We said input lava from the left and output all fluids to the right. And we need to label these right and left, and now it has moved all the lava. The mod adds some specific support for cauldrons, because they are not inherently fluid inventories, but we can treat them as such, because I've added uh, capabilities to them. Or rather, it infers the behavior. This won't add other behavior to mods. I'll just stop talking. Let's get this working so we can use the same code and just say instead of that being left these will all be left and now it has moved lava out of the cauldrons but this is not something that you could do with uh, fluid pipes what are they called mechanical yeah so mechanism and other mods their fluid pipes won't connect to cauldrons so i've specifically made this and that works with water as well. And if we had another tank, we can call that right. And we need to edit this because we want to input not just lava, but everything. And now it has moved the water. So cauldrons hold three uh, bottles worth of water and that doesn't really divide evenly. So I think this can technically give you infinite water one millibucket at a time if you do it right, uh, but I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, so 
so that's water. What else is on the list? So you can edit disks in your hand by just right clicking. And I found that this is actually a decent way to take notes, especially in game, because it has its own text editor. So we've done input outputs, labeling, uh, limits, retention, and each. So we've mentioned each, but retention is interesting because that tell, lets you keep a certain amount of items within the inventory. So let's set up an example for that. If I have stone in the left and I want to make sure that I move stone to the right, but I want to keep five stone in here, then we can do that. Every 20 ticks. I think that's the syntax. And then we need to label it. So now it's moved all but five stone to the right side. And you can do this for multiple items. So if we'd say, let's move 10 stone at, a once, at once, but we want to keep five in there at all times, and then we want to move all coal. Then that should play nice. So it's only moving 10 stone, but it'll move all the coal into the right chest. So that is how uh, retention works. And you can also do retention on an output. So let's say I want to only have 10 coal in the output at any time. So we could say output uh, retain 10 coal to right. and we'll add the stone as well so that we can still move stone. So now if we have a bunch of stone and a bunch of coal, it'll move 10 stone at a time, leave five stone inside here, and it will only insert 10 coal into the destination. So that's how uh, retain works on inputs and outputs. And it doesn't have syntax highlighting, which can be fixed later. So what else is this mod doing? We have resource types. We've talked about that with fluids versus items. It also supports mechanism gases and chemicals. So if we had a chemical tank with, sure, sulfur trioxide and an empty tank, we can move these. So this is a gas. input from the left all the gas and output to the right this uh, doesn't output to the top by default so we'll fix that and now it's filling up our tank with sulfur trioxide it should be by empty by default it's empty usually you can break and place it and then look inside and see it move. So if we increase the delay on this, say 200, then now we can watch it fill the entire thing. So it works with uh, gas and the, uh, the other stuff, because there's more than gases and the stuff for infusers, like the redstone, diamond, all that stuff. That's a different type of chemical. It supports that as well. Hopefully I'll get some better in-game documentation for that later. So what else can this do? We have slots and sidedness. So we've talked about like top side, bottom side, but you can also do slots. Uh, so if we said from left slots two to 10 and 13, we can limit the, the slots that this will be working on. So the coal and stone that we've been practicing with, if it's not in slots two to 13, it won't be touched. But now, uh, so these slots are being affected. And we can also say slots on the output restricted. And now it's paying attention to where it can output as well as input from. So that was slots, and then you can view uh, 
program disk contents by just holding shift while hovering them. And this also supports redstone. So that is kind of, it needs improvement, but it kind of works. So let's do every redstone pulse do. So every time the manager gets a redstone pulse, move everything from the left to the right. Let's get a button. We have crap in the left, some stuff in the right. We press the button, it has moved everything over. That's only if the manager receives the pulse. So if we put it over here, it would still get a pulse by uh, redstone logic. But if it was over here, then this would not work. And I'm looking for ways to improve this in the future, but for now, you can do it directly applying to the manager. And you can share cables with managers as well. So if we had a disk in here, whoops, and we want to do the same. then it is also able to see left and right. And this one is running continuously, so it's not waiting for a redstone pulse. So we broke that. Now we're back to just the one that wants redstone. So that's kind of the extent on redstone support for this right now. If you want to like control a redstone output, then, uh, I don't know, use a comparator on a chest, because I haven't gotten that far yet. What else can we do? Uh, quotes and regex. So that is interesting because the way I've already shown so far, so let's do every 20 ticks do, I've shown you star ingot. So the, the asterisk is a match all thing. So if you have raw underscore ingot, then that would be matched by doing a star. And you can also quote your things. So if you had uh, in quotes, you could do iron or copper ingot. And this is literally regular expressions, which is less good for performance. So what's this script do? From the left, move iron and copper ingots to the right. So if we have some ingots for iron, copper, and neither. Come on. There we go. Then it's only moving what matches this regular expression. So when it's in the quotes, it's regular expressions, but when it, without quotes, uh, you can use a star without having to do dot star, because technically this is the regular expression to match everything. So if we just did a star in the quotes, that is not a valid regular expression, and it should tell us as much. So it says invalid resource identifier, dangling meta character, yada yada. So it's not very intuitive, but it's uh, what I've got so far. Maybe in the future I'll move away from regular expressions, but for now it's it's working and it's not that bad for performance. Especially this, like this is specifically supported to be as fast as possible. It will detect when you're doing match and fast. But if you wanted to like match copper and iron ingots, instead of doing what we had before where it was like iron or copper, Ingots. I'm pretty sure that works in JEI as well. Let's find out. So this is slower than if you were to do uh, something better, which would be just doing iron. This would be faster, and we can probably test that actually. So if we run the fast version with some ingots. taking a couple hundred nanoseconds. And if we switch to the regular expression, it will be about the same or maybe slightly slower. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty fast for very small stuff. 
But if you have like a thousand chests, then maybe try and stay away from it. But it literally tells you if your thing is taking a lot of time or not. So if it's not taking a lot of time, then don't worry about it. So that was uh, quotes, regular expressions, and then specifically the word redstone. So earlier we had every redstone pulse. This is a keyword, which was a bad decision uh, because that means if you want to move redstone from left to right, it will complain. Uh, mismatch input pull, to help if I spelled pulse right. So it says extraneous input redstone expecting yada yada. And that's because this is a keyword and it needs to be instead an identifier. And we can force it to treat it as an identifier by putting it in quotes, which is very ugly. Now we can move our redstone properly, as we should be able to. Oh, because it wants redstone. Pressing the button, it took all the redstone and moved it. In the future, I want to make this not a keyword, or I want to make it work when you do this. But for now, uh, that is the current state of affairs. And then there's also if statements. So let's look at that. If we have if. So let's say if there's aluminum in this chest, then move everything. Otherwise, do nothing. So if left has more than zero aluminum, then do the inputs and the outputs. Ah. Invalid program. Uh, oh, yes. There we go. So now, if it detects the aluminum ingots, it should move everything, which means, actually, let's make this a timer. So it's currently has a minimum of 20 ticks. If you try to do like two ticks, it should complain. Yeah, minimum trigger interval is one second. So either 20 ticks or literally one second. That's just for performance reasons. A viable alternative input one second. Oh, really? Plural. There we go. So now it detected that there was aluminum ingot in there. delete some of this garbage. So when there's not aluminum, it won't move anything. But once it does detect it, then it will move. Stuff. And there are set operators, which is a, so if we have more than one chest, so let's say this is also left, then we want to check if every of these chests has aluminum, not just one. Then I think we can say if every left has more than zero aluminum. So now if we put some aluminum in here, it shouldn't be. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Maybe I am misremembering how this is supposed to work. What do we say? If every left has more than zero aluminum, then input from left, output to right. Weird. I'll need to look into that. I haven't really used that much because it's not like I, I added it because it was cool, but not very something I haven't used a lot yet. So maybe this is not right. I have an example somewhere about what this is supposed to look like. If every A has greater than 10 iron ingots, all inventories must match. Oh, did I push the labels? That's why. Nope. Or yes, okay. So now if we have some aluminum in here with some furnaces and some garbage in here. It will not move until all of these chests have And we can do more than just every. There's a few keywords, so there's uh, some. So if at least one inventory, uh, if exactly one, zero or one, or you can count overall. So if I said if left has greater than 100 aluminum ingots, then that will count between all of them. So that's less than 100 and some garbage. And if we finish off 
and then once we add 100, everything, counting between all the inventories. Whereas if we said, if every left, uh, then that would expect each of them to have at least 100 aluminum. So in this case, that one does, but this one doesn't until we add more. And of course you can do, uh, instead of just more, you could do equals, or you can do equals with equal signs. Uh, so it has both syntax. And I think I added parentheses support, but let's not get into that right now. So that is if statements set operators. So you can move a lot of items very uh, precisely with this using the slots and the item filters and all of that. So let's clean up all this garbage. There's also a printing press added to the mod, which is something you can use to duplicate these uh, disks. So let's clear everything. Get a printing press and something to copy. So in this case, we'll copy a disk and we need a piston, a button. So looking at the recipes for this, come on. So we can copy maps, programs, written books, enchanted books. So if we want to copy a program, we need an existing program, black die, and the form. And we can get the form for a program by dropping an anvil on the item with a block of iron. So let's get an anvil, a block of iron, and we have our disk that we want to copy. So we want to copy this. Let's get the form. My drop. <laughs> So now this is going to copy our disk when we use it with the printing press. And we need black dye. The form and a disk to copy onto. And then to activate it, we need to put a piston facing down. When we press down, it will turn the program into a copy of the one that we had created the function from. And this should work with the other things that we can see in JEI. Uh, so if we were to copy an enchanted book, we first need to get the form for it, and then we need some experience goop. And we get the goop by combining shards, and we get shards by crushing enchanted books with obsidian. So let's do that. So if we have an enchanted book and we drop an anvil on it, that turns into goop, or sorry, shards, which we can then create this goop, which we will use to copy it. And we need the form for what we want to copy. So if we want to copy sweeping edge two, then we need to drop an anvil on this with an iron block. And now we have the form, which we can use with the goop and a book. So instead of uh, ink, it's using goop. And we need, whoops, we need the piston. If you click both mouse buttons when staring at this, it will change the orientation or whatever. It'll place it better. So that's how that works. So now we have all three ingredients and we press this. Now we can get copies of our uh, what is this? enchantment. And of course this consumes the goop. So this is, uh, you're sacrificing nine enchanted books to copy one, which is more balanced than it was originally gonna be, but it's still uh, pretty good. So that's the printing press, which you could uh, use to automate copying program disks so you can build some kind of self assembling factory if you want. That's kind of the core of the mod. And the only other thing I've left to show you is 
the game tests. So making sure that I can keep updating this mod while uh, not breaking things for users is pretty important. So that's why uh, I've created a bunch of tests, which we can uh, take a look at. So I create a bunch of inputs and outputs, and I create a program, and I say uh, what I expect the program should be doing. So if it should be moving items from left to right or whatever, it will check that it has done that appropriately. And there's 50 of these, so it tests uh, dropping the items to make sure that you can uh, break them properly. So like, what is this? Falling anvil disenchant. Oh yeah, you can disenchant items with this. Uh, so if you have an enchanted item, I think it has JEI support. So if we look at the usage of an anvil, then, so if you have an enchanted item and some books and you drop them in the world with obsidian, it will move the enchantments from the items onto the books. So we had an enchanted axe, and then we split the enchantments off of it. Uh, some other tests, so moving moving energy. Uh, you can have very complicated wire setups. Uh, you can move a lot of lava from cauldrons into the tanks, so, and it's doing it pretty well. Sometimes the very first uh, time it ticks takes a lot. So if you had all of these filled, then it took a little bit of time. But it's not like if you have a giant dripstone farm, they're not all going to be filling very constantly. So that shouldn't be a problem. And of course, these tests are also to monitor the performance of the behavior. So if you have, uh, I want to make it pretty, I, I want to know if it's going to be bad for a common use case. So if you have a bunch of barrels and should move items so if you're backlogged and these are all full then uh, that's a little bad for performance but it's uh, better than it used to be so now these tests help me monitor that behavior uh, one of the ones that i thought was pretty interesting is this one so i have a bunch of barrels filled with just random stuff that you can have so if you had some kind of crafting station uh, adjacent to a chest and you wanted to keep that chest stocked with all your resources then this program does that. It takes care of emptying the chest and then uh, making sure that it has a copy of everything that it, you would want to be crafting. So if you used all your cobblestone and furnaces, it will restock that. And this program actually is kind of laggy, but it's still sub 50 milliseconds, which is not bad. Uh, interesting. It actually got better when I took some items out. So here it's taking a long time. But if I take some items out, apparently it gets better. Very strange. I'll have to look into that. Uh, but there's a bunch of tests, which I think is very fun to look at. And that's how I make changes to the mod without uh, accidentally breaking things without noticing. And there's a few other things I check as well. But that's uh, the mod. So here's like a test for the button press. It has copied a disk. Uh, yeah. Feel free to join the Discord, ask questions. I'll be around.